In this video, we are going to discuss open access journals and open educational resources, or OER. As a student, these concepts may be new to you. It's important to be aware of them because OA and OER, as they are called, will help you throughout your college career and beyond. To begin, I'll explain how research gets published and made available to you via the library databases. A little bit of history. Over the last century, large monopolies of journal publishers have increased the cost of accessing their articles and textbooks, making it difficult for colleges and universities, and by extension, scholars like you, to access cutting-edge research in your field of expertise. When you search the library databases for articles on a topic, you may be only accessing a very small percentage of all the articles published because libraries cannot afford to buy all the articles. That hurts you in the long run because you don't have access to all the available research that's out there. Have you ever done a search using the library's databases, found the perfect article, only to realize you didn't have access to the full text? Simply put, libraries have to make very difficult decisions on what to purchase due to journal price increases. Sometimes that means you will find an article you can't access. Here is an overview of the traditional publishing cycle. Typically, it is the government or large foundations that announce the need for research on a topic. Researchers at universities answer the call by conducting the research, writing the paper, and submitting it for peer review. Once it is accepted by the publisher, the author transfers her copyright to the publisher and does not get paid for the work she has done. Once published, libraries pay for the articles via subscriptions, and the only people who have access to it are the students, faculty, and staff affiliated with the school. The public is granted no reuse rights, and it is difficult to get the research into the hands of those that may need it. The most egregious part about this model is that the government is sponsoring the research using our tax dollars, and yet the publishers do not make it available to everyone. So you and I pay for it, yet we cannot access it. There is an alternative model. It is called open access. The open access model is much more flexible. The cycle starts out the same as the traditional model, but the article is also placed in an open repository where the public can download the article and we are granted full reuse rights under an open license. If you think about it, this approach is more appropriately aligned to the sharing and advancement of knowledge. It gets the research out there for people to read at a much faster speed than the traditional model. And that's a good thing for all of us. Here is an open access definition I like. Open access, OA literature, is digital, online, free of charge, and free of most copyright and licensing restrictions. It's important to faculty and researchers for these reasons. For faculty, open access is important because they get to keep their copyright and share their findings with colleagues and students around the globe. They also get to build upon their peers' research in the same field if they share their research in an open access repository. So everybody wins. It's important to students for these reasons. Students are able to find open access material and take it with them to the next level of scholarship. They cannot do that with publications they find using the library databases. Once they leave the institution, their access to the scholarly literature within the library's databases is gone, whereas with open access material, students can continue to have access to the research, and if it has the proper open licenses, they may be able to adapt it. Students are able to reach beyond the library's database offerings to DOAJ and other OA resources to investigate topics inaccessible to them via the library databases. Now, let's look at open educational resources. Whereas open access is free access to scholarly research, open educational resources are educational materials that can be shared. OER can be retained, reused, revised, remixed, and redistributed at no cost to you. This is called the five R's. One of your instructors might be using OER in one of your classes right now. It is subject-specific content that makes education more affordable for all. OER can be a mashup of music, podcasts, articles, videos, and other educational content your instructor has put together for you. 
This content is not bound by strict copyright laws of traditional publishers that cannot be shared or edited. OER content is created by experts, instructors, and professors across the globe, and typically posted on the internet for others to edit and share. You may be using an open textbook, which is a type of OER, where one chapter is written by a professor from Trinity College in Dublin, Ireland, another chapter by a researcher at the University of Delhi in India, and yet another from a community college instructor in the United States. A 2015 survey showed that 93% of students who use OER rated the quality of the open textbook the same or better than a traditional textbook. Overall, the picture emerging from the research suggests that assigning open textbooks in college courses is likely to provide the same benefits as commercial textbooks at no cost. OER differs from library resources in that library resources are subscription-based content purchased from traditional publishers. As noted earlier, these resources are free to students but are not free to the institution's library. Even though it is free for you to read, you are restricted from sharing or editing and redistributing content from library databases. While sharing similar qualities, the motivations for creating OER are different than creating OA. In academic publishing, faculty need to get published and have their work cited in order to receive recognition and advancements in their careers. The open access publishing model is where that can happen in a much more equitable way than in the traditional publishing model. The motivation of OER is to create educational materials that are relevant to the student community in a particular course. The instructor knows what they want to teach, and OER gives them the flexibility to pull content from a variety of resources to meet their teaching objectives. Of course, the other equally, if not stronger, motivation is to alleviate the costs of a college education. I like this quote from Hilton and Open Pedagogy. When faculty use OERs, we aren't just saving a student money on textbooks. We are directly impacting that student's ability to enroll in, persist through, and successfully complete a course. In other words, we are directly impacting that student's ability to attend, succeed in, and graduate from college. That's the nuts and bolts of open access and OER. I hope you will embrace these two resources as you progress through your education and long after. If you have any questions, your librarians are happy to show you resources and help you get started.